Okay, so welcome to part two of our Hyperduino video series. Uh, today we'll take a look at actually hooking up the Hyperduino and making use of it. Uh, so let's look at everything that we got in the kit. So here's the kit itself. Uh, it includes the Hyperduino shield, which goes on top of the Arduino Uno. Uh, we've also got some LEDs, and this bag also includes an RGB LED. Uh, we've got some flashing LEDs, photo cells, a motor, a servo, uh, we've got a little volcano, paper volcano that we can use for one of our projects, uh, and a bunch of hookup wires. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is test out a LED with the Hyperduino. So step one is to attach the Hyperduino shield uh, to the Arduino Uno, and to do this you just line up the pins and stick it into place. And the reason it's called a shield is because it just sits on top and it provides access to all of the standard pins um, if you wanted to put another board on top. Um, what's special about the Hyperduino is it actually takes each of the analog pins and the digital pins um, and it provides a special output for them uh, right here in the middle of the board. And for all the digital pins, it actually has a resistor that's in line between the pin and the actual output. And so this means you can wire up an LED without having to use a separate resistor and risk burning out the LED. Uh, so there's no risk now with putting LEDs in. So now that we have the shield assembled, uh, we can go ahead and attach the LED. And to do that, I'm just going to use uh, this wire here that has two wires attached to it. And I'm just going to stick this into the very end of this socket here. So this socket is labeled GP3 and this is pin 13 um, and so we've got the white wire going to the top pin the black wire is going to the bottom pin that's actually ground um, if you look at the LED it doesn't matter which LED you, you use as long as it's one of the regular ones so either a red, yellow, or green one uh, so one leg is longer than the other the longer leg is positive, the shorter leg is negative so you want to make sure to plug the positive end or the longer leg into the white wire and you plug the shorter end uh, or the ground into the black wire. Okay and so now that we've got that plugged in we can go ahead and uh, go over to the computer to light up the LED. Okay before we fire up Hyper Studio and test out the LED we're gonna make sure that the Arduino has the Fermata library that it needs to communicate with Hyper Studio. Uh, and to do this, you can actually follow along with an Instructable that I created uh, on the web. Uh, but really quickly, what you do is you just fire up the Arduino app, plug in the Arduino to the computer, um, go under File, and you can say Examples, and under there you can find Fermata, bring up the standard Fermata uh, sketch, so a sketch is just a program, and this just allows the uh, Arduino to communicate with Hyper Studio or other applications on your computer. Uh, make sure to uh, select the correct port. Um, so this is the one that it's plugged into. So here you can see it says Arduino Uno, and I want to pick the correct board. It's already set for Arduino Uno, so I'm set. And then I just hit Upload. And while I'm uploading, uh, you can see it's flashing, indicating that it's uh, working. And once it's done, it should say done uploading, and it flashes a couple times, and we're done. So now we're done with Arduino, and we can quit out of that. Okay, now that we have the standard Fermata library loaded onto Arduino, we can go ahead and use Hyper Studio. And to do this, I'm just going to use the Arduino LED test stack. Uh, so double clicking on this should bring up the Hyper Studio stack. And you can see that uh, it loads the stack and then it automatically starts blinking. Uh, if it says Arduino not found, you can just unplug the USB cable and plug it back in. And then just clicking on the message and it will go away. Uh, so you can see it's already blinking. The LED is blinking, indicating that it's able to communicate. Um, if I want to, I can use this uh, Hyper Studio stack to turn off the LED. And then I can just select these buttons to turn it either on or off. Okay, so the last thing we want to test is the photo cell. 
um, and to do this we'll use the analog pins. Uh, so before we were using the digital output pins to light up the LED and now we're going to use the analog input pins. Um, and the reason they're called analog is because they can measure a voltage uh, anywhere between 0 and uh, 5 volts. And so we're going to plug two wires into the pins uh, on the far right of uh, what's labeled JP6. Uh, so this is analog input A0. And then we'll take our little photo cell, uh, which just looks like that. And we'll plug this in. And unlike the LED, it doesn't matter which wire goes into which. Uh, because uh, the photo cell is just kind of like a, a, an on-off switch. Um, it just varies the amount of voltage, but it doesn't matter which end is plugged into which pin. Um, so now that we have that plugged in, we'll go ahead and we'll fire up the uh, Arduino photo cell uh, test stack. And so this will open up in Hyper Studio. And uh, one thing to uh, note is that the analog inputs, because they're analog, they actually have uh, these little blue uh, variable resistors here that can be used uh, to control um, how much uh, current actually flows through. And so you may need to actually adjust this uh, depending upon what it was currently set at. So the best way to do that is turn it all the way counterclockwise uh, till it stops and then slowly turn it back until the LED turns off. Okay, so you can see the LED's off and now if I put my finger over the photo cell you can see that the LED actually lights up. Um, and in the Hyper Studio stack it, it is actually showing a little red dot when it either uh, is covered or it's not covered. Um, so now that we have everything tested, we can go ahead and actually build something uh, with our Hyperduino. Uh, so see you next time.